Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be getting better at geometry. If you want to do some introductory geometry level of problem, geometry type of problem, I suggest you try this problem out for a minimum of 20 minutes, ideally 45 to an hour and 20 minutes, especially if you're beginning to get comfortable with geometry, cyclic quads, angle bisectors, everything, all that good jazz. Please try this out for that much time and at most two hours. If it takes you two hours and you're like, oh, I cannot do it, then please, please, please just watch the video. Learn something new. Okay, so now without further ado, let's begin. If you want to go ahead and draw the diagram, you know, take, take five minutes. Draw the diagram. Well, how do you draw it? Let's see. A, B, C, D is a cyclic quad. What do we need? A circle. Boom! Circle right there. And now we need these. Okay, all these intersections are necessary. So we take kaboom and... Kabam bam boom, and then we go kapsh, and kapsh, and now we have these intersections. I've been making videos for a while today, so I'm making these sounds. Now we do B, A, D, C. I don't know why I labeled them like that. And now what are their names? A, B, and C, D is F, and this is E. We have the angle bisector of AEB. Intersects the sides. Which sides? A, B, and C, D, and P, and the Q, and A of D. This one right here. Angle bisector. Kaboom, 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 boom, kaboom, boom. Intersects which sides? A, D, and B, C at K and L. We must prove that this is a rhombus. K, P, L, Q. So what is a rhombus? First and foremost, a rhombus is a quad where all the four sides are of the equal length, right? You can think of it as a square, but it's, you know, leaning a bit to one side. That's what a rhombus is. That's what we have to prove K, P, L, Q is. So, how are we ever, ever, ever going to accomplish such a feat? Well, I don't know. That's why you're here. So, let's see. What do we have here? I don't know. Let's calculate some angles. You know, that's the reality. I don't know what we have here. We need to find out. That's why these are called problems and not solutions. God, I should be sleep deprived more often then I'll maybe make, come up with better jokes. Or maybe not, maybe these jokes are not that cool. So let's do alpha, beta, and let's make this then gamma half and gamma half. And then I'll have this as alpha and beta. And then this is 180 minus beta. And then we have the angles are going to be so this is going to be beta minus gamma. No, actually it's going to be beta plus gamma over two, I believe, right? Beta, because I need a beta half. No, actually I need, wait, what do I need? This plus this is 180 alpha minus beta. So I need beta minus alpha. So I'll have beta minus alpha over two, beta minus alpha over two. Okay. Let's see, what now? Can we prove anything anywhere really is now the point. So let's see the first thing sort of, what do we know is true about a rhombus? So if you don't know what's true about a rhombus, then what you do, you draw a rhombus. And then you try to see, okay, let me solve the problem backwards, starting from what I need, like starting from what I, believe what the problem says it's true and let me see if that gives me some claim that I can prove make an in-between claim that will lead me to the rhombus claim so here if I draw a rhombus let's call it x y z t and everything is of equal length then I have okay diagonals here meet at 90 because if you take like this is equal to this, so if you take a 90, if you take a perpendicular from t to x, z is going to pass through the midpoint of xz. 
same with y. And so t and y are perpendicular to xz. And in fact, I believe if you prove that two opposite sides are equal and parallel, you prove it's a parallelogram. But if you prove that these are perpendicular, then you've also proven that it's a rhombus. So here, do we have this angle of intersection? Let's call this point O. And actually not O, O is just like a name for the circumcenter. So let's call it something else, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Let's call it G. So I invite you to pause for the next 15 minutes and try to figure out, do we have the angle E, G, F? Pause now. And here's the next step. The answer is, yay, we do have the angle E, G, F, because we can actually calculate every single one of these angles. What is this? This is alpha plus gamma half. This angle right here alpha beta minus alpha half alpha half plus beta half so this angle plus this angle is equal to 90 plus alpha because alpha half plus gamma half because we have alpha half alpha plus beta plus gamma is 180 and so when we have them boom 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 we'll get 90 so this plus this is 90 90 plus alpha, then this is 180 minus alpha. You sum these three up, you get 270, which means this angle right here is 90. All right, so now we have that QP and LK are perpendicular to each other. Now, it would also be very, very nice if we had the extra thing that PQ, I mean, if we had equal, can we get that two of them are equal? Or if not equal, can we get their parallel? Or parallel to something? Anything? Like, if we just maybe prove that this is parallel to this, this is parallel to this follows. And I invite you now to think about strategies. What are we going to prove? Pause for 10 minutes and think about your strategies. What else can we prove here? And here's the next step. So the next step is that we have what? We need to calculate the angles. Angle chase, chasing all these angles. So what do we have? We have this angle is alpha plus gamma half. Why am I looking at this angle? Because I was literally just staring at the picture. I cut it out. I was staring at the picture and I just waited for something to come out. And then it did. And now a lot of things are coming up. Whoa, I'm seeing so many different things. This is what happens when you stare at a picture. And also it helps if you solve a lot of geometry problems. So now what I have is, this is alpha plus gamma half. And I was looking at parallel conditions and then I thought, wait a second. Alpha plus gamma half, alpha, gamma half. So this is alpha plus gamma half. And now what does this give us? Bingo, hopefully. It gives us that because it gives us that FP and FQ are the same distance, like the same length. This is the same length as this. And if you think about it, we have the angle bisector. We have a 90 degree angle. Of course, they're going to be, this is going to be a mid, of course, this is going to be an isosceles triangle. And of course, then GP is equal to GQ. Analogously, we get GL is equal to GK. And now with this, I invite you to pause for another 10 minutes to try to push the problem forward. And here's the next step. What do we have? We have a quad now where you have the intersection of diagonals at a 90 degree angle, right? You have this is equal to this. And you have this is equal to this. Now, almost there, or are you there? Are you finished actually? Are you almost there or are you finished? And the answer is, well, there are many ways to finish now. One is called the Pythagorean theorem. And that's just saying like, wait, what is KP? KP, say squared 
is equal to pg squared plus g g gk squared. Now this is also equal to so pg, g the midpoint of pq, is equal to gq squared plus, again, say gk squared, which is going to equal to what? gq, gk, kq squared. So now we have this is equal to this, boom, 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 boom. And similarly, we'll get that this is also equal to this, and that this is equal to this as well. And so we have a rhombus. And so we've actually, in virtue of that, we've proved that this quad KPLQ is a rhombus. It goes to show how you need a couple of things to notice. This was really how do we can we calculate the angle? And you do that angle chasing. Angle chasing, you figure out what are the angles you need. This gamma was maybe unnecessary. I could have just written down instead of gamma, 180 minus alpha minus beta. And then I would have everything about this quad, all its information that I need, that I, actually that I think I need, written down. So this goes to show that if you're careful about angle chasing, and after you do that, you still need to think, okay, this is a 90, what does that get me? I chase some more. You could just chase all angles and then figure out, wow, this is equal to this. But then you need to infer, wait a second, I have, because this angle is equal to this angle, I either have by the Pythagorean theorem or by congruency that QG is GPU. And then it takes an extra step to see, oh wait, this means I'm done. This finishes up our problem and as always, Thanks for problem solving. Hello fellow problem solvers. So there we go.